Well, good afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally, literally does not work. It is draft week, and we've got so much stuff that's going on. I don't know about you. I'm excited as can be that, hey, it's finally here. We're finally going to be adding some players to the Dallas Cowboys roster, and the question will be, who will it be? or actually several of these players, who will they be? Who will be our number one pick? Will the Dallas Cowboys trade up, trade back, sit pat, go for a wide receiver, go for substance and go for that offensive lineman, go for that defensive tackle, go for an edge rusher? Who knows? But, you know, we're, we're trying to you know narrow it down. And, of course, everybody's turning over every rock and trying to figure out what's what and who's who. Um, we're hearing that the Eagles may be trying to move up and change with the Jets, of course, because they will always draft a wide receiver. That's what they do. Um, we hear that the Giants are trying to trade Darius Slayton, and we're hearing that the Carolina Panthers, who said that they probably would not be drafting for Baker Mayfield before, uh, excuse me, trading for Baker Mayfield before the draft, apparently there's somebody who is interested in actually trading for him. That's not the Carolina Panthers. Be that as it may, shout out to Cam Billings, who ended up sending, sharing me with me a, a clip and things about Kenyon Green. Kenyon Green, the Texas A&M product, um, who has been, of course, in several mock drafts for the Dallas Cowboys. There's a little issue with Kenyon Green, possibly. Let me go to the tape here so we can... Uh, listen to this, and then we'll go on about Kenyon Green and the possibilities of the Cowboys getting him. Well, I, I'm actually going to go away the interior of this offensive line. Mm -hmm. Kenyon Green is is an outstanding player out of Texas A&M. Now, there is a chance because he's got a little bit of, of mm -hmm. a, a knee issue that he could fall out of the first mm -hmm. round for health-related reasons. Make no mistake about it, he is a first-round player. So even if your concern was how long he's going to play, with Tom Brady on your team right now, you are on a year-by-year -year basis. So just go ahead and continue to add talent to that interior offensive line. You have depth. You can absorb an injury. He played four different spots on that offensive line at A&M. You're chasing a championship right now. You're not thinking long -term. If not, Green could be Zion Johnson, right, from mm. BC? No, no question. Another yeah. one who has position flex. Okay, so as we listen to that, that it could be a knee issue that is the problem with him that could be, you know, one of those things like an arthritic knee or something type of an issue down the road. He is, now let, let's be clear here. He is a beast. Um, he would be a day one starter, a guy who we definitely could use from day one. He's a road grader. Um, he is a true guard, but he's also played center and tackle as well. He can play across the line. And having flexibility, you have to understand, there's not a lot of guys who can play multiple positions on the offensive line. You know, we're always told that offensive linemen, you know, they're not skilled players like a wide receiver. You know what? Screw that. If you've ever had to take on an edge rusher, if you've ever had to pull and try and get to a linebacker, if you had to go through and take care of a 300-pound monster coming up the middle, there's a lot of skill involved in that. And to be able to go from one side to the other, to understand all the different positions, because see, every one of them is different. If you can write with your right hand, just try writing with your left hand, because that's honestly the difference of playing right tackle versus left tackle. Everything is reversed. Your stance, your lean, your first step, your eyes, where you're, you're looking for everything, it is a totally different skill set. To have guys that can play multiple positions gives you great flexibility because you never know who's going to get injured. And ultimately, you want to have your five best guys out there. If you have a guy who can play multiple roles, then you're not necessarily stepping back. If you only have one backup for Tyron Smith, he may not be your sixth best player. If you only have one guy for Zach Martin, he might not be your sixth best player. If you have a Kenyon Green who can play multiple positions and Tyron Smith goes out, maybe he ends up moving to Tyron Smith's position. You end up bringing Connor McGovern or whoever uh, is your next best player that can fill in his spot. 
it gives you all kinds of flexibility. And let's be clear here. One of the biggest problems for the Dallas Cowboys has been when we lose a Tyron Smith, the replacement for him, be it a Ty Nasecki, and Ty Nasecki was awful. Ty Nasecki was so bad. How bad was Ty Nasecki? Ty Nasecki played one game, and they kind of just got rid of him. And then they ended up juggling the whole offensive line where we ended up taking Darren Steele, who had been playing great at right, going over to the left, and then bringing in Lyle Collins and you know to play. It, just, it was just a hodgepodge. The Cowboys never really recovered from Tyron Smith's first injury on the offensive line, and it showed on our running game. For me, I'm not the wide receiver and the first-round guy. I am the substance. I am fix the lines. I am, oh, my God. I have to be Vosh Lombardi here because Vosh is always that guy that says draft an offensive lineman. Draft an offensive line. Always, always draft an offensive lineman. That is Vosh Lombardi's motto, that if you don't have that offensive line, and especially now we got Dak and stuff back together, we've got – Zeke, who's lost a few steps, you need to have that offensive line together to give Dak as much time as possible since the wide receiving talent has taken a step back, possibly. You also need to have that offensive line that can help run and open up holes for a slower Zeke Elliott. Um, You definitely want to have him being able to have some clean holes and not getting hit in the backfield or having to break more tackles back there. And if if this is true, that Tenyon Green is dropping a little bit, if you saw a video that I posted earlier where they were talking about teams that may want to move back into the first round to grab one of the quarterback prospects because of having the fifth-year option. If they're drafted in the first round, you've basically got them locked down for an extra year. If they're not, then, of course, you've got a shorter term with it. It's going to cost you more draft capital. But there's always going to be a need in a scramble for quarterbacks. And if that is the case, and if a Kenyon Green has fallen some, maybe you move back a couple of spots. Somebody else moves in there. You get the guy you want. You get an extra pick. And this would end up being a great move. I would be more on board and more inclined for the Cowboys to be able to move back and be able to take care of the the lines than I would be for them to move up and reach for a player. I'm, I'm not, that, that's just not me. It's just not me. So hopefully, you know, and there's no word exactly what the issue is with the knee. It could be that it just needs a clean out. And right now knees and are typically no big deal anymore. Not like when I grew up. Um, and the Cowboys have a propensity of drafting guys with injury history, because they look at it as this is a way we can get first round talent at a discounted rate. I'm not exactly a proponent of that, but hey, it's what the Cowboys do. We'll see what happens. We'll definitely be discussing this more tonight. Shout out to Cam Billing as well as to Damn Gina for giving us the updates on what's going on around the NFL. Because I can't get it all. There's so much stuff going on. I just can't cover everything. As hard as I try, I try I try hard. I try real hard, but I can't always get everything there. And with that being said, you know how we roll. We're going to get up out of here. And I will see you tonight. Troll game is strong.